We had a black economy before the civil rights generation. We had intact families before the civil rights generation. Most of the businesses we went to were black before the civil rights generation. They gave it all up. Most of our children were born in two-parent households before the civil rights generation. They gave it all up. And they didn't give a damn how the sons grew up. They didn't give a damn how the daughters grew up. Give me my weed. Give me my sexual liberation. And give me my little job at the Ford plant. And I'm done. Completely and totally incapable of fighting white supremacy at any turn, at any angle. Totally incapable. You people screwed up everything. Most of us understood that drugs were bad for us before the civil rights generation. The civil rights generation created the interracialist culture. The civil rights generation created the bastard baby epidemic culture. The civil rights generation created the whore culture. The civil rights generation created the drug culture. The CIA just took advantage of what you already were because they could see how weak and how shallow and how hollow and how decadent you were. They could see it. They could see how phony and weak you were. And they just took advantage of the weakness that was already there. That was all they did. Nobody held you down and forced you to accept cocaine and heroin. You wanted it. And J. Edgar Hoover simply provided the product that you desired. Because he knew how weak you were. And just like Section 8, the Civil Rights Generation created the Section 8 welfare culture. That's what you did. And now these no good worthless bastards want us to thank them and show gratitude to them for creating this cesspool? Hell no. Completely and totally incapable of fighting white supremacy at any turn, at any angle. Totally incapable. You don't need businesses. You need to go pick at these white folks and tell them, let you in! Let me in! Let me in! I want in this store. I want in this club. I want in this fraternity. Completely and totally incapable of fighting white supremacy at any turn, at any angle. Totally incapable. The Civil Rights Generation, let me run down the list for you all right now. The Civil Rights Generation created the bastard baby maker culture. The Civil Rights Generation created the bastard baby culture. The Civil Rights Generation created the drug culture. The Civil Rights Generation created the STD culture. That's right. The Civil Rights Generation created the herpes culture. The Civil Rights Generation created the three women can sleep with one male culture and it's okay. The Civil Rights Generation created the drug culture, the heroin culture, the crack cocaine culture. The Civil Rights Generation created that. That's their baby. The Civil Rights Generation created the interracialist culture, the integrationist culture, the sell your soul to sit next to white folks on the toilet culture. That's what the Civil Rights Generation created. The Civil Rights Generation created the marching and protesting and turn the other cheek and bow before your enemies culture. The Civil Rights Generation created the marching and protesting culture as a response to police brutality. The Civil Rights Generation created the lineup. 50 people in a line lined up for Air Jordan's culture. That's the Civil Rights Generation. That was their idea of raising children. Who needed, who needed the way that Carter G. Woodson and, 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 and Marcus Garvey talked about it? Who needed that? They had a better way. The Civil Rights Generation had a better idea. Who needs civilized culture? Who needs progressive culture? Give them a weed. Give them a smoke. Give them a drugs. The Civil Rights Generation created the ghetto culture as black culture. Culture. The Civil Rights Generation changed the words ghetto and black to be synonymous. That's their culture, cultural accomplishment. The Civil Rights Generation created the culture vulture invasion acceptance culture. Tina Marie and 
her ilk. The civil rights generation created the term honorary black people. Never met a black person who was an honorary Caucasian, but the civil rights generation will knock you over and beat you to death today to sit up here and be called an honor. To, if you sit up here and tell them that Bill Clinton's not an honorary black person, even though he created the three strikes law with his good buddy Newt Gingrich, and they made you all think they were against each other, and they were for each other the whole damn time. They were for each other and out to get you. But the civil rights generation considers being spit on by white society to be an honor. They consider wiping the feces and the saliva off of their faces to be a privilege. And they've taught the rest of you to accept that as a privilege. And I'm saying it in the terms it needs to be said in. I'm saying it just like it is. They accept that kind of treatment and they want you to accept it too. And that's why they're on your asses so hard and heavy to start bowing and scraping. And when the your civil rights generation didn't give y'all a damn thing, they didn't leave you any businesses, they didn't leave you any neighborhoods that are worth a damn, they didn't leave you any property, they didn't leave you any assets, they didn't leave you any institutions, they left you nothing. They don't, and when you ask for it, they don't show up with anything. Call your parents tonight and ask them what they're passing down to you. And they got a lot of you repeating that same damn slave plantation crap talk. My parents passed down to me a good mind if you're stupid enough to believe that emotional feelings are worth more than money then obviously you ain't got a good mind so that's your proof that your parents didn't give you what they told you they gave you obviously because you think kissing the ass of folk who left nothing to you somehow indicates you got a good mind none so blind as them who will not see Here we are trying to create a society from scratch. Because we can't create a society from your penchant and your obsession with integration. The civil rights generation never bothered to ask, but wait a minute, what if I'm not okay with them spitting on me? The civil rights generation taught you that, you notice they don't show up for anything else at any other time. They never show up for anything that you need. They never show up for anything. When you ask about what am I being passed down, crickets, you can't find them. When you ask them where your assets are, crickets, you can't find them. But when the police gun down young black people, all of a sudden here comes the civil rights coon generation. Entry, enter stage left. Here comes the civil rights generation to tell you, now y'all need to be good now, march, protest, sing, sing a hymn, we shall overcome. You've been talking about overcoming for 80 damn years now. They're quick to, all of a sudden, you got, you're surrounded by the civil rights relics. All of a sudden, you're surrounded by the civil rights fossils. When it's time to speak assets, you can't find them with a magnoscope. You can't find them with a microscope or a magnifier. But when the police show up, all of a sudden here come throngs of the civil rights generation to come and tell you, don't do anything. Don't say anything. You don't need businesses. You need to go picket these white folks and tell them, let you in. Let me in. Let me in. We are not a people who are operating as if we are at war. I don't want the majority of black people because the majority of black people are not fit to go with us. We can't take the majority of black people with us to Africa because the majority of black people are not trying to build anything. And Africa needs builders, not a bunch of niggas standing on street corners. They need black men building businesses on every street corner, not standing around on every street corner. And let me tell you something, the world is run by builders, not by beggars. And 
the world has no mercy for beggars, especially able-bodied beggars, who wait to look and see what somebody else has built and see if they can hang around and beg for a few crumbs off of what somebody else has built. Meanwhile, they build nothing of their own. If I could get it, you could get it. Your able-bodied, grown-ass men. If I could get it, you could get it. Your grown men looking for somebody to treat you like your mama's boy. Like your big-ass babies. I went to Chicago, I went to Chinatown. I went to Mexican town. Business after business written in Spanish. You wanna know what black town looks like there? You wanna know? Do you really wanna know what you're up against? Really? Do you really want me to say that out loud where you can hear it? Do you really wanna know? And Rahm Emanuel breaking himself, breaking his arm, patting himself on the back, talking about I told Whole Foods that if you build a Whole Foods in the north side of Chicago, you got to build one on the south side of Chicago. So Whole Foods has a lot. They ain't built nothing yet, but they got a lot. So now, not only do you have condos in Chicago that black folk can't afford, now you got a grocery store that they can't afford. And what that tells you is that that grocery store ain't going to be for you. Businesses are the beachheads of the instruments of war by Europeans. These are the instruments of war. And when they buy a lot in your neighborhood, they are setting up their base of operations. We are not a people who are operating as if we are at war. I don't want the majority of black people majority of black people are not fit to go with us. We can't take the majority of black people with us to Africa because the majority of black people are not trying to build anything. And Africa needs builders, not a bunch of niggas standing on street corners. We keep playing this game with them Where they kill us and we sing a damn song They kill us and we pray to Jesus They kill us and we say let's forgive them Is anybody out there listening? Do you all understand something tonight? Listen to me, damn it! Do you understand that I, Jason Black, I am more outraged and angry about the murder of her son than Walter Scott's own mother is. Is anybody out there listening? I'm more outraged about it. I'm more angry than his own mother is. Cause she ain't angry. She's not mad. She don't care. She's gonna bury her son and keep it pushing. Jesus is on the main line, tell him what you want. His family isn't calling for any heads. He's already been arrested for murder. His family's not calling any, for any heads. They're not calling for one damn thing to happen to him that hasn't already happened. He's been arrested. My brother didn't deserve to get gunned down like no dog. What should we do about it? Forgive, forgive, forgive. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Well, hell. In that case, in that case, how do we prosecute Michael Slager when Walter Scott's mother is singing a steady chorus of forgive, 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 and Jesus is on the main line? How do we, 
how do we gin up the people and excite the people and rally the people around punishment when his mother is saying the punishment is forgive? Jesus is on the main line, tell him what you want. How do we go out here and say that you can't kill people? Well, why not? Because you took this man away from his family. And then here comes Megyn Kelly and Bill O'Reilly. Well, let's talk to his family. Uh, Miss, Miss Scott, yes, you're his mother, yes. How do you feel about your son being dead? Forgive, forgive, forgive. Um, you're the, the brother of Walter Scott, aren't you? Yes, I am. How do you feel about the case? Forgive, forgive, forgive. You're the sister? What do you think? Forgive, 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 forgive. Hell, that's it. That's it. You play that for the jury, it's over. And nobody wants to say this because it's the truth. But, and you don't want anybody to take the damn wind out of your sails. I'm not going to sit here and get animated when these Negroes are removing the weapons that I need to punish people. Because we get ourselves worked up into a lather and we get ourselves all animated and excited and we sit, sit over here and start sparking off and warming up the electric chair and then here they come talking about forgive, forgive, forgive. Jesus is on the main line, tell him what you want. How do you convict George Zimmerman when the, when the mothers are not angry? This is the time for the mothers to be angry and screaming for justice. In Palestine, they scream for justice. In Iraq, they scream for justice. In Italy, in Mexico, in Barbados, in Japan, in China, they scream for justice. In black society, forgive, forgive, forgive. I had five kids. I got four spares. Forgive, forgive, forgive. These are individuals who are so beaten down and broken that they are now sacrificing their own offspring. That as long as you will leave her alone, giving up her own son is just considered to be acceptable losses. And there were two other black males standing next to her. Old ass niggas. And I'm saying like I feel it. Old ass niggas. Even as old men, they should have been standing up and saying what was going to happen. That there will be consequences for black blood. And they didn't do a damn thing except sit there with her and sing like a bunch of old heifers. And then you wonder why the police feel free to gun down our children in the streets. With impunity because they know that there is no punishment mechanism. There is none. None. And we keep playing this game with them where they kill us and we sing a damn song. They kill us and we pray to Jesus. They kill us and we say let's forgive them. Is anybody out there listening? You teach people how to brutalize you. You teach people how to disrespect you. You teach people how to disregard your life. You teach them how to do that. And you teach them that early. And then they teach their children how to disregard your children's lives. Right now we have a situation where, can I just be honest with everybody here for a moment about this right now? Everybody, do you understand that if you can contaminate, you know, you all are aware that, you know, when you conquer a people, you have either, you either annihilate them completely or you kill the warrior class and subjugate the women and children. You're all aware of that. But, do you all realize that there's a third option? You can leave the warrior class right where they are, if you can contaminate the women. 
You either kill the men or you contaminate the women. And do you understand that they have successfully, we have to just say what it is, it's success, they have succeeded at contaminating black women as a group. Where 20% of your black males have herpes, but 50% of your females do, they've contaminated your women. Everybody wants to talk about Israel and forced sterilization. They're not talking about what black folk are, what, 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 what people are sitting up here making lifestyle choices to do right here. Nobody wants to talk about that. Because then you have to face the facts that the demon in the room is, is you. Nobody wants to face the demon in the room. Do you understand the tremendous psychological and human toll that that takes? Do you understand the human toll that that takes? That takes a tremendous human toll. And I'm telling you that the reason why single mothers as a group routinely fail at raising children but single fathers routinely succeed is because we have a situation where at no time have we been able to face the truth about these things and repair the damaged psyche of the females. They're far more sensitive to these types of psychological loads than men are and their psyche is damaged as a culture, as a group. Their psyche is damaged. And nobody knows how to tell, to get the other people fully psychologically prepared because you have people with, women with damaged psyches raising sons and daughters and damaging their psyche. Now it becomes a pattern where you're being told that you're forbidden to speak the truth on these things. And now you have a situation where the majority of your black females are dying single. And the ones who are they're having husbands, but they don't have men. They're just taking whatever male will take them. Do you understand the huge human impact, the human toll that, that takes? Does anybody understand the human cost? Does anybody understand the gravity of that? Where you have a family, a whole, I say family, but you have groups of people who are kinfolk like that and simple things simple things like not dying alone we don't have that simple things do you all understand the damage that that's doing to the third and fourth generations of children do you understand what that's doing to them where they are now saying that they don't care. So what if I got three babies by the time I'm 19? It gets even worse than that. You got girls in their 20s. So what if I never get married? My mom died alone. My grandmother died alone. And the problem is that this is killing them inside. It is killing them inside because that is counter to everything that the female is. A female is built from the ground up to be nurturing and caregiving. And we have taken these females in black society and we have told them, no, we will give you nothing to care for and nurture. You will raise, you will keep these children like goldfish and prevent them from being, from dying from exposure or malnutrition. But we are, going to let you grow old knowing that you are just going to be alone do you know what a huge a huge destruction of a person's psyche that does to them most black women today are screaming inside not not crying they are screaming they are absolutely what do you think the weight gain is about what do you think that's about what do you think the, the whoring the attention whoring and twerking and all on Facebook and the STDs what do you think that's about what do you think that's about 
Why do you think that's going on? Why do you think that the attitude of I don't care, why do you think that is? When a person tells you that I don't care to something that is life altering, I don't care. This is life altering. I don't care. They're telling you that they've been broken. That person is telling you that I've been broken. And I don't have any fight left in me. I don't expect tomorrow to be any better than today. Somebody like that shouldn't have children. And yet, 75% of our children are being raised by individuals who are on a suicide mission. 75% of your black children are raised by single mothers. Individuals, their psyche is broken and shattered, and their spirit is broken. And they have just resigned themselves is they're getting earlier and younger at this now. They resigned themselves that it's just over. It's just over. This is the kind of thing that I want people to understand. This is this is this is what you're asking the males to choose from. You're asking them to make choices like that. And as females, you all should be able to at least be able to come together and say, wait a minute, I can show you a whole group of on-point black women. And that's not happening. You can find one here, and you can find another one way over there. And then if you wait a few weeks, we can find another one. You are not going to survive as a people with your redeemable members of society so vastly spread out. That's part of the reason that I did 7 a.m., to call everybody together. Because we're making all kinds of false assumptions that we shouldn't be making. We are claiming that there's a naivete that is not actually there. That there's an ignorance or lack of knowledge that is not actually there. These people know exactly what they're doing. They're making decisions. And they're making decisions based upon their experiences, their environment, and the fact that they are ill-equipped to do better. They feel completely and totally ill-equipped to do any better. And I want everybody to understand the reason why I speak to these things is because we are not going to survive as a people with females with a shattered psyche to the point that you have a 50% herpes rate. You're not going to survive with that. Madame Noir magazine is officially an enemy of black society. Officially. And Huffington Post is right there with them. So they get to just sit here and, 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 and trash the name of Malcolm X and all they all just gonna sit back and go back to watching The Walking Dead and playing on your Xboxes? Madame Noir magazine um, online. A list of celebrities that you didn't know were bisexual and then they do show a black man on the list and can you believe it can you believe the unmitigated gall the heresy of these worthless cyber bastards that they actually had Malcolm X on their list of quote celebrities you didn't know were bisexual. Repeating the lie put out by Marvel. Debunked years ago. They, put, they repeated this lie that he said claiming Malcolm X was bisexual. Claiming that Betty Shabazz was seeing other men because Malcolm wasn't there and wasn't interested. The man's got all these damn children with her, but okay, fine. They have their black 
mouthpieces that they bought and paid for, and they are sending them out to leak this into the atmosphere, to spill this and contaminate this into the arena of thoughts. So that everybody's mind state is equally polluted and tainted by this. We are not going to take down the enemies of black society as individuals. We are only going to take down the enemies of black society as a group. And that first and foremost starts with us making it clear that there is a price to pay when you do things like this. That we're not going to tolerate the enemies of society, black society either, either from without or within. That your clowns and your puppets were going after all of you. But there has to be a point where we say, damn it, no more. You are not going to go after Malcolm. A man who put everything on the line for us, and we're just going to let them get away with this? Are you all really just going to sit there and let Madame Noir just get away with this? You're just going to let them smear this man and let him keep walking? So they get to just sit here and, 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 and trash the name of Malcolm X, and all y'all are just going to sit back and go back to watching The Walking Dead and playing on your Xboxes? You. you can go to hell if that's you. A man who unhesitatingly put his life on the line day after day for his people and spoke the spirit of resistance in a way that nobody had up to that point. To the extent that he still galvanizes black men and women to this day. Whoever controls your income controls your life. Whoever controls your income controls your life. Hello, I'm Black Society and I'm broke. All our societal bills. I didn't say some. I didn't say most. We have to stop this fight. All of our societal ills can be drawn back to our lack of money. You need to understand that. It is not your lack of education. It is not your lack of degree. It is not your lack of proper religion. We are in the ditch that we are in on every single socio-economic level because we lack money. Just like alcoholics know, they can't help you until you admit you have a problem. And you have to admit what the problem is. Hello, I'm Black Society and I'm broke. and I'm broke. You show me a black family that's broke, destitute, and dysfunctional, and I will show you a black family that owns nothing, controls nothing, and is passing nothing off. One thing that I want everyone to walk away from this documentary understanding is that our problem is that we have been focused on civil rights, even though we can't figure out who civil is, but we want him to have rights, apparently. We have been focused on education. You gotta go to school. You gotta get a good learning. You gotta get a degree. Without any real plan or goal for telling our children to get a good education. We've been groping it strong. That's one, I want to clear that up for people. We've been groping at straws and focusing on all the wrong things. Getting a degree for the purposes of getting a job is worthless. 
we've been looking at the construct in society and the fixture and not understanding how the entire machine works. You don't tell your child to get a degree so he can get a job. You tell him, get a degree so that he can get into the capitalist system of earning income, but that his end result is ultimately to be a major trader of wealth. That's the purpose of getting into the capitalist system. You get into the system so that you can master it and cash out. Whoever controls your income controls your life. Whoever controls your income controls your life. We teach our children that their job is to enter the system and work until they die. And we've told our children that wealth doesn't mean anything. We've told our children that your job is to go to school, get a degree, and in case some days we aren't even told them to do that. Get a good job working at a company. We're giving them outdated information. You can't even work for the same company for your whole life anymore. And that Jesus will provide. Back to what I said before that our problem is lack of education, lack of politics, and lack of proper religion. What I want people to walk away from 7 a.m. understanding is that those are not our problems. Our problem is that we lack control of our money. That's what the problem is. We don't have any money, and we lack control of it. And without that, nothing else is going to happen. Permanently removed from black society, period, end of discussion. Run, black man. 
I said, let me see you run, black man. I'm running, sir. Where are you running to, boy? Chicago, sir. We got this lot. No, it's opportunities down this here, sir. planet is ours. Where no. you running to, boy? No, sir, I can work hard, sir. Chicago? Yeah, I can work You're hard down here. You're not getting anywhere down there. No, but just give me a job. Where give you running to now, black man? You don't have an economy wherever you're going. Where are you no. at now, black man? Well, let me try Detroit. I can just try Detroit. to work hard. Yeah, let me work hard. We got hard. you cornered down here, boy. What did I tell you? Stop please, running, please, black man. Just stop following me. Stop Where are you running me. to, boy? Please, I don't want to fight. Atlanta. Just stop following me. Yeah. Why are you down here, boy? I, I told you you job. don't have an economy anywhere you run on this Sir, planet, if black you'll man. Just give me a job, if you'll just give me a job. You ain't got an economy down here. Sir, if I can just get a job, I, I promise I'll boy. be good. No, sir, please. Turn please. you out down here. All right, Where stop, you running stop to now, me, black please, man? Sir, stop following me. Just, just let me, I let me get a job. I don't want to fight. Already. Philly. I, I don't want to fight you, sir. You can't even hold your head up up here, boy. Sir, I don't want to fight you. Just Where are you running to please, now, please, boy? I told you it's useless. Stop running. Please, just give me a job. I went to university, Go sir. ahead, run. It's my entertainment. I don't care. All Go right, ahead. Sir, Where are you running to now, black man? Let me just, let me get out of the country. In L.A. Get a job. You don't get a piece of this pie down here, boy. Sir, I'm not right. there. Where are you running to now, I'm black man? Sir. Get on that plane. I don't I'm care. Not black. I'm an African American, sir. I'm this an African American, sir. We control this, boy. I'm an American. You can get a token when I give it to you, but this but is all. Please, sir. Yeah, can I, be a token? I told you to stop running. It's you, sir. Boy, can I just so be go the ahead token? and run. Let me see you dance the jig. Okay, sir, I'll just be the token. That's I'll right. give you my son. You're really I'll give funny you my with son. Your defense, boy. I don't want to go on offense, sir. Where are you running to now? Freetown? Yeah, maybe South Africa. <laughs> this is better for me, sir. You don't give up, do you, boy? I told you everywhere you go on this planet, you're trapped. You don't have an economy, boy. But I want to, please, sir. You've been just celebrating give me a job. Christmas eating turkey legs instead of building it. Christmas is a holiday for boy. celebrating. Family and about love. to fall down and where you're running to now. Just give up, black man. I, I want to head back to America. Little boy, just give up, I said. Where you running to now? Go to America. You don't have anything. Okay, I, I don't know have South anything Africa. down here. Okay, let me just go back to America and I can get a job. Boy, for get you, out sir. of South Africa. Head back to America. Where are you Please, headed now? Sir, look, I've never been to jail. Just give me a job. Please, sir. If that's the best option, boy, we pulled the same trick. That please, we did sir. over in South I Africa. Didn't, I didn't vote for Obama. I didn't vote for him. So we please, gave Mandela. We gave you guys Obama. You're not getting anywhere. You don't I'm a own anything. Sir. You don't own any sir. wealth, I'm, boy. I'm not a Democrat, and I'm not black. And I'm, I'm not an African American, <laughs> sir. I'm, I'm an American. Please, come on. Let me see you run, please. black man. I don't, Pick I don't up the care. Pace. Trayvon and, and come on. Yeah, don't get tired now, black man. Come on, sir. Please, I'll do anything. Just give me a job. No more huffing and puffing, black man. Let me see. Pick up the pace. Where are you going? I'm already tired. I'm Where are you going? Please. Just give me a job. Where are you I going now? I think Mike Brown was in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's his fault. Stand up, black man. Build an economy. Build power, wealth, and influence or perish. So when he speaks about the police, he stepped back after he had said lost their lives, stepped back and said, had their lives taken. He made sure to go back and correct himself and say, had their lives taken. But for Eric Garner, Mike Brown, Trayvon Martin, he just said that Eric Garner, when when he lost his life, he said that as an afterthought. He was going to move on to the next sentence and said as an afterthought and lost his life. Mike Brown and Eric Garner, if you're going to talk about these individuals and they lost their lives. But for the cops, he said lost their lives, or rather had their lives taken. So Eric Garner's life was not taken? So Mike Brown shot a half a football field away and his life was not taken? This is Stephen A. Smith. This is what white supremacy has done. This is what you got to do to get on TV nowadays. This is what they expect from you. And as black men, 
it is imperative that we as men have to speak up about this to say what in the world is going on. Jet Center Nick Mangold wore a hat that had the lettering NYPD on it, commemorating the two New York police officers that were gunned down on Saturday. Giants coach Tom Coughlin wore a black stripe and peace sign pin to honor the victims. Of course, this comes after the controversial death of Eric Garner, who was killed during an altercation with New York police. Guys, what was your reaction to both Mangold and Tom Coughlin? <clears throat> Skip, I thought it was incredibly appropriate. Um, if I were a professional athlete, I definitely would have done the same thing. I want to applaud Nick Mangold. I want to applaud Tom Coughlin and any and all uh, professional athletes of those who are associated with professional sports for doing what they did to pay tribute uh, to the law enforcement officials. And I'm going to use the word that the mayor of New York used when he said they were assassinated. Mm. Um, they're law enforcement officials. They're there to protect and serve. Um, my personal belief, I have no proof, no evidence of this whatsoever. It's just mere conjecture on all of our parts. But obviously, we think when you heard the news anyway, the first thought that came to your mind is that the aftermath of the whole Eric Garner situation in New York City when he, he was choked uh, by the cops in Staten Island and ended up uh, losing his life because of that incident. You saw the outcry um, in the aftermath of that. You saw professional athletes like Derrick Rose, like LeBron James, like the Lakers, um, and so many others wearing the I Can't Breathe t-shirt. Um, in my opinion, it would have been entirely apropos if they too wore something to honor those officers who were slain. We live in a society, we live in a nation of laws and rules. And without it, you have anarchy. Without it, you have chaos. And the fact of the matter is, it's incredibly important that while we go through the things that we go through and we understand that everything is not entirely as it should be, the fact remains that by and large, our law enforcement officials do exactly what they swore to do. Or, that is protect and to serve. Most of them do a damn good job. They keep our society being the greatest nation that exists in this world. And the fact that two officers were sitting in their car and somebody came up to them and killed them both. You know, as far as I'm concerned, there should be a special place in hell for the individual who did it and ultimately took his own life because he was too much of a coward to accept the consequences of his actions, in my opinion. Nevertheless, it is what it is. And as we discuss this and we think about those people associated with professional sports who took the time to point out how they recognize the loss of life as it pertains to these officers in my heart, I speak on behalf of myself, Skip, and everybody associated with this show, and I believe this network, our hearts go out to the families of these slain officers who've lost their life, had their lives taken from them. The fact is, is that when you have professional athletes who, if you're willing to wear that I can't breathe T-shirt to point out how this particular individual, Eric Garner, or you want to allude to Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, or anybody else, mm -hmm. ended up losing their life, then the same level of sensitivity should be accorded to police officers who, by the way, put their lives on the line every day, all right, who had nothing to do with this particular incident in question, but end up getting, dare I say, assassinated the way that they did. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's horrific. It's, it's incredibly sad. And, you know, and it, there's no words for it. I just, I'm, I'm just sincerely happy that those people, Tom Coughlin, Nick Mangold, and others, brought attention to it, and I insisted skip did as well that we bring attention to it on this show because if we're going to sit up here and talk about the i can't breathe t-shirts because of what happened to those individuals whether it be or you know in this particular instance with the i can't breathe t-shirts with eric garner yep. how can we avoid talking about this it's the right thing to do you know what's sad about this is because that was the most obvious example of a negro who has been broken Ever since he got suspended 
for say, making the comments that he did with folk trying to say he was condoning or at least not being harsh enough, saying that women need to keep their hands to themselves about what happened with Ray Rice. Next thing you know, he was suspended, yeah. and that is a Negro. All it took was one suspension to break him. That was it. ESPN suspended him. That was all it took to break him. And that was what you just heard was a broken man. And that the fact that they did that, that's what they want to do to all of us. Everything and all these machinations are about breaking every single one of us. To see all of us broken and bowing with your head yeah, down. Definitely. Sitting here, you're a, you have a black face, but you talk like a white supremacist. You have a black face, but you talk like a redneck. You have a white face, but you talk like a Klansman. And that's what they want to do to all of us. That is that moment of satisfaction that they've been waiting for. And he just sat here and danced a jig on national TV as if somehow he is excluding himself in the future from any further repercussions that may happen. He's acting as if now he's excluded himself. He's saved himself. He's bought, finally bought himself an out card. He just literally spit on the graves of Eric Garner and all of these other innocents who were murdered. And he went out of his way, went out of his way to make sure that you understood that he sees what happened to Eric Garner and, and Trayvon Martin and Tamir Rice, a 12 year old. He sees them. What happened to them is way different that what happened to them was they lost their lives. It was just unavoidable what happened. What They lost their lives, but it was in no way connected to anybody else. But the police, oh, they were murdered. Oh, we, we, that was connected to other people. Tamir Rice, he just tripped and fell on those bullets. But what happened to those cops in that car? Oh, that, that, we have a direct link right here. And then to demand that the black athletes should be wearing shirts commemorating the very police who cannot wait, like Amadou Diallo, like Sean Bell, they cannot wait for an opportunity. Uh, he has, this is what they want to do to all of us. Now, as I pointed out, the, the New York Police Department is lost. They've lost this one. They've completely lost it. They don't have it. This weekend, they thought they were going to change the national focus from Eric Garner to themselves. It blew up in their faces. It failed pitifully. They can turn their backs or whatever. They failed to change the subject. You got up this morning, and we kept rolling. It was a weekend story. It got you through Sunday. Now we can get back to football and get ready for Christmas. Bad week for things like that to be happening because Michael Brett, the um, Darren Wilson verdict was given Thanksgiving week. Well, this incident's happening going into Christmas week. You see how you can use holidays to distract people's attention in a situation like this. So now they're, they're, they're marching out their shills because public opinion is against them. I have always said that as black people, we should be driving the events. That we spend too much time playing defense. We need to be on offense and driving the events. Pushing the events forward. Putting them on the defensive. 